Hello and welcome to this Ecolution Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna have a look at morphology. This is a nice algorithm which applies morphology to your image objects. First of all, a quick definition what morphology is. So morphology is an image processing technique for the processing of geometrical structures. And in Ecognition, the algorithm smooths the border of image objects by the pixel-based binary opening or closing operations. So you can choose between opening or closing in Ecognition, and I'm gonna show you how that works in detail in the next few minutes. And the masks that we are using are crucial for morphology and the output that you're creating. And by default, you can create circular and rectangular masks in Ecognition, but you also can alter those masks as you like. So you can create a cross or a line or whatever. And in Ecognition, actually, the hash represents true and dot is false. And each element of the mask represents a pixel and the pixel size is defined by the project resolution. So hash is true and dot stands for false when you define the mask in Ecognition. And those filters that you define, they are moved across all the image objects that you define in the domain in the morphology filter and the objects are altered accordingly. So it will change the outlines of objects that you define in the domain. And for morphology, we do have two functions implemented, opening and closing. And those can be applied on your image objects. And opening is a combination of erosion followed by dilation and closing on the other hand is a dilation followed by an erosion and those two have different effects on your image objects. So opening removes small objects, um, it removes noise and actually you also can find objects into which a specific structuring element can fit. So the element that you define this filter has a high impact, the shape of this filter high impact on the result of opening or closing. And as I said before, right opening is erosion followed by dilation and closing. This one removes small holes. Actually, if you have small holes in your objects, you can run a closing function here. And this one is dilation followed by erosion. Let's have a look at opening first. Again, erosion followed by dilation. So how does it look like? On the left hand side, you see the filter, then the input image and on the right hand, the output. So first you apply an erosion and the output is only true if all pixels in the filter are true. So in this case, we have this cross like filter, the red pixels, and that is only true for one pixel. So the output is only one pixel is true, right? And then it's followed by dilation. And here the output is true if any pixels in the filter are true. So if the filter is touching a true output, in this case now the input, right? So the true output of the previous erosion, um, it is true and you're gonna get this output finally if you apply opening. So only objects that are compatible with your filter shape. Closing is the other way around, dilation followed by erosion. So first, if the filter is touching an input pixel, right, uh, the true one, which is blue, it will write a true output value that you see on the right hand side. So in this case, it's growing and closing the gaps and also buffering uh, sort of. And after dilation, the output is used as input and Ecognition automatically runs an erosion afterwards. So the output for the erosion is true if all pixels in the filter are true and that erodes the object so it's shrinking. And you see this one is closing the gap in the center and also removes the, that hook on the top right. So this so-called nose. Right? And when would you use morphology? You can use it for generalization, so smoothing object outline, remove noses, you can close gaps, and you also can make sure that objects have a certain width, and this is unique, right, about morphology. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. And you also can find shapes, right? Um, as you saw in the opening, it first does the uh, erosion, so you only get objects where the filter 100% fits in, right? So if you look for a circle or something, you only get circles where the filter circle fits in. And you can be very creative creating those filters. 
Let's have a look at a few examples in eCognition. All right, I have prepared three examples. One is looking at how to improve the outlines of one class, in this case, agricultural irrigation circles. Then we're gonna have a look at the land cover classification, uh, smoothing the outlines of all image objects in all classes and how to use the morphology to do so. And finally, uh, circles project where I simply wanna show you how the shape of the filter for the morphology influences the output, right? And how you can detect certain shapes using the morphology filter. All right, let's have a look at the data folder and we're gonna start with this 01 morphology smoothing round object outlines. And you're gonna find a project file in there. So a DPR file, simply drag and drop that into eCognition developer. And there you see that we have a background image. I'm gonna switch to the Ruset development layout quickly. And we have a Ruset, we have an image, uh, irrigation circles. And um, first is I'm gonna run the setup. What this does, it, uh, it calculates an index layer, I think NDVI, yeah, NDVI, and applies a segmentation. And we do have two levels now, and we're gonna apply morphology on the top level. And what you see is that I tried to detect the irrigation circles, right, based on the NDVI simply and um, did our multi-threshold segmentation, I guess. Yep. And that is the result. And now I would like to improve the outline of my irrigation circles, right? Get rid of those things, those noses. Uh, close gaps if we do have some gaps in the center close stuff like this right so improve the outline of the image object um, classified here as egg, uh, vegetation um, to get them to look more like a circle right this one for example I want to remove this one as well and morphology is suited uh, to do so and what I'm gonna do is I first use opening let's have a look so I'm choosing the algorithm morphology, domain, that's important, image object uh, level, actually that's uh, the default setting. And I wanna apply the morphology on my vegetation class. Then here on the right hand side in the parameters, we do have these two options, open image object or close image object. And then the mask um, option, here you can create a mask um, automatically, create a square mask or create a circle. And you can also manually create any filter you like here, any mask. Um, yeah, but that's then on you. And yeah, here you can define the size. Let's go to 30, create circle, and it becomes bigger. Five, create circle, whatever. Good, we're gonna stay with 15, hit okay. Um, active classes, um, that means the objects that are in this case uh, added uh, will be put into this class. Let's leave that at none. Erase all classification if there is no new uh, classification. Leave that default to yes. Use class description. Yeah, if you have a class description, you can use a class description. Otherwise, it will be ignored. Um, and yeah, erase all classification. If there is no new classification, defines the classification behavior when no new class can be assigned to an image object. If yes, all classification will be deleted. If no, old classification, classification will be kept. Um, I also can quickly then change those settings, uh, but first let's go with those settings that are defined here. And you should notice that we're gonna get better outlines. So opening mainly shrinks a bit, right? So this one became bigger actually, but it should have removed, where was it? Ah, down here. Let's decrease the opacity. All right, so see at the bottom level, we still had this outline uh, classified as uh, vegetation, uh, but now after opening, those have been shrinked or removed because uh, this mask that we defined didn't fit into those areas here, only here. And that means it smoothed the outline slightly. If you increase the size of the circle, um, you're gonna apply greater smoothing in this case. Um, 
And I'm simply gonna run the setup again and let's change some of these classification parameters because I'm also not 100% sure. Um, let's set the active class to, gonna create a new one, new class and give it a red color. And then I think it should put those removed objects areas into this active class, new class, let's see. All right, that's exactly what's going on. So you see now this is new class, you see what has been removed. Um, let's change that again. Erase all classification if we set this to no. Gonna run the setup. And then we're gonna see the difference, run this again. And then it should keep the classification um, in this removed object, right? And that's the case. So we still have this classified as veg vegetation. If you set this erase old classification, if there is no new classification to know. Um, if you set this to yes, I'm gonna run it again, then this will be put into unclassified, right? So this is opening pretty straightforward. Um, you're gonna have different effects if you change the mask. Um, I quickly can increase this to, let's go for 35, create circle. I don't know if this has a huge influence here now, uh, but we should remove more, right? Because the mask is larger and it doesn't fit everywhere. And we do, you see, we do remove more of those areas let's go here maybe and you also see the effect here at the corner and the outline or the shape of the mask here at the edge um, I'm gonna go back to 15 and then rerun the setup opening again and then I'm gonna quickly go into closing so closing is more or less growing I would say um, same settings, only the operation is different and the mask is huge. So 60 and circle. And what that should do now is let's have a look at an area. Ah, this one here. So it should actually grow and close this uh, gap a little bit. Um, and improve the outline here if we run that closing. So opening is more or less shrinking and closing is growing into the surroundings based on the mask definition and the object shape. There we go. So you see the difference, it grew into that area, right? So we added this and now I would say We run the merge region on level two. And I would say that we now have improved our image object outlines. So they look more like circles and we smooth the outlines using morphology. That's enough for this example. Let's have a look at the next one. If you have multiple classes, land cover classification with like five, six classes, how could you implement the morphology to smoothen all image object outlines of each single class to get a nice generalized result. <clears throat> okay, I simply will drag and drop the DPR file in this 02 morphology LCC folder. Um, this project file, simply drag and drop it here. And I'm not uh, saving the previous project. And that's what we have here. So what uh, do we see? We see an image object level called new level classified image object. So we do have one, two, three, four, five different classes, length of our classes. And uh, yeah, now we wanna apply morphology to smoothen the outline and create a more map ready vector uh, or map ready results. And yeah, we don't, oh, we can run the setup and reset that should result in exactly the same objects. And now morphology, what do we have? So we start here with closing. I mean, what I wanna show you here is um, if you apply it in all image objects, what happens, right? Um, erase all classification if there's no, all right. Let's first run the 
closing. That's now applied on all image objects and now opening. Um, this smoothens the outlines of all image objects. What you see here as a result of opening is that we have small image objects, right? Opening is shrinking. And um, actually what you would need to do is apply, uh, let's first emerge region. Wow. Merge region, default settings. So those small objects are merged. We still have small objects that you probably don't want to have, right? As a result of this growing and shrinking. So my recommendation is to then run a remove objects algorithm and set as condition the area, right? So removing or dissolving small image objects into their surrounding. Uh, pixels, yeah, I'm just gonna go now for something random, nine. So everything that's smaller than nine pixels, every object's gonna be solved into the class, into the surrounding class, right? Based on the longest common border. That's the default setting. And that would be a smooth result. Um, if we zoom in and I do the reset, you're gonna see it's quite a drastic change, right? I'm gonna run this section again, smoothing and we are, we are altering the image object outlines quite a bit. The issue here is using this approach is that you do not have an influence on which class is treated first, which second and third. So <clears throat> it takes those classes uh, r randomly, right? Uh, in a random order and you don't know which class has been used first. So the recommendation is if you want to have full control um, that you do it step by step for each class. So you start with, let's say the forest, starting with uh, the class or the object that is covering most of the area and for closing and also for opening. I run the reset and now closing. Now we have only affected the forest class, right? And if we do opening, I actually, I can put this into a class, in a dummy class um, temp. So you see the influence of opening, right? Uh, execute, and now all these purple objects, they have been removed from the forest, right? So they, that's the effect of the opening, so shrinking more or less. And now we actually could run this, we don't need to merge yet, um, the remove objects, because we wanna remove the temp class and dissolve it into, uh, we don't need a condition here, all temp, dissolve it into the surrounding, right? And target class is none, and this will resolve those image objects based on the longest common border with the surrounding object. If I execute this one, you see all temp objects have been dissolved into their surrounding. And now actually we still can run a merge region because you might have objects ah, right here. Resulting objects that are touching each other, but there are two different objects or two different objects, right? Sharing the same class run this and this procedure was now only applied on forest. And actually what you could do now is simply copy and paste this section, morphology, control C, control V. Um, gonna rename this morphology forest. And now we're gonna do, what's the next one? Low vegetation. and change simply the class here. So this is only applied on low vegetation. And now you have full control, right? And actually, yeah, what are we using here as a mask? It's a fairly small circular uh, mask with a width of four. Um, if you increase that, the smoothing will increase a lot, right? Now this is only applied on the low vegetation class because I changed it in the domain. Let's execute this one. And you see 
closing we closed gaps actually and now low vegetation uh, again we apply the opening and that is a shrinking of those noses and i now gonna dissolve those into the surrounding merge region yeah and if you do it this way actually um as you see, the order of the classes, of course, has an impact on the final result. If you're first smoothing with morphology, the forest and then low vegetation gives you different results than first low vegetation and then the forest. And uh, yeah, and also smoothing the forest outline impacts the surrounding objects, right? Or objects that are touching forest, th those are uh, affected as well. So it plays an important role, uh, which class you run first through this morphology smoothing um yeah and now i'm quickly going to do it for all the classes here simply copy and paste and i'm going to fast forward a bit so stay with me okay that's it and you see it's quite a drastic impact i'm going to show you before and after all right and this shows how you can use the morphology to smoothen a land cover classification in this case to get a more more map ready outlines right last example i'm gonna go fairly fast let's have a look at the data folder and it's zero three morphology detect circles that is just a nice example which highlights the importance of the mask so this is our input image it's just um black and white and what i want to do is get objects that represent the circles. So first of all, I'm simply running uh, multi threshold segmentation and I'm detecting black. And black is now in this uh, red color and it's classified as circle and white is the background, right? And um, now we can use morphology to actually close those gaps, right? Those here using closing. And that's the first thing I'm gonna do I'm closing those gaps and you also get some altered outlines here at those tight corners. Um, settings here are, right, I'm running it on the circles, close, and um, I'm using a circular mask with a width of five. And now I only wanna have the circles and actually you can use morphology. And what I try to do is I'm using open the mask that you define here has to fit into the image object. So everything where the mask doesn't fit in, the, it's gonna vanish and remove from that object. And I'm choosing a fairly large circular mask because I uh, want to have my circles delineated nicely. And that means if that mask is put here onto uh, a line, it doesn't fit, so it, it's removed from the object, right? And i simply gonna run this one and you see the resulting objects are the circles. And that simply happens because the mask is larger than those lines, it doesn't fit in the lines, and then you get only the circles where this mask fits in. And yeah, I think that is a nice example how a mask influences the result. Also remember the theory slide with the cross mask, um, it only detected the cross where it exactly fitted or across or larger. So you can use this also to remove small objects and especially removing objects that don't have a certain width or parts of an object that don't have a certain width, right? And if you define a, a circular filter uh, of five, and then you will end up with objects having at least a width of five. This is actually an approach how you can apply the width as a minimum mapping unit. All right, that's it. Um, Quite interesting, a nice tool to smoothen your objects and improve the outlines. Try it out and see if it is useful in your workflow. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.